150 for a cocoa. That is very, very cheap. Looks like we're stuck here. <laughs> and all this going on during COVID. So you can see him shredding it into this bowl and then he'll put it in a bag and give us the whole bag of the shred. They have these bikes that carry around all these containers of coffee and delivery to. Good morning from Maceo, Brazil. Today we're going to Mercado Artisanal, an artisanal market that's supposed to be pretty cool here. Yeah, so hopefully we'll see a lot of handicrafts, homemade goods, and it should be a good experience. Luckily today is overcast, so it won't be as hot as yesterday. So, let's see what this has in store. Some sugar cane juice. Caldo de cana. So currently we are in the state of Algoas and Maceo is the capital of Algoas. So it definitely has a big city feel, lots of people, cars all over the place. So we've been looking for parking for about 10 minutes. It's not easy. So on a lot of these streets, they don't allow you to park on the side of the street. So I think we're gonna have to pay for parking, which is fine. It looks like it's about a dollar to park in these estacion, what are they called? Estacionamentos. Estacionamentos. <laughs> parking lots, essentially. All right, we found a parking lot. It's seven real, I'm guessing for an hour. So a dollar fifty for an hour. Not bad. There are these little parking stations that you can barely see. They're just marked with a sign and you drive in here. Super narrow. We're off to the artisanal market. Just set our parking location because we're kind of in the middle of nothing specifically. As we can see, so we can find where we are. You can set your parking location on maps so that you remember it. So we're on our way to the market right now, and we're passing through a an outdoor shopping center or something like that. There are tons of people everywhere, tons of stores. Everybody's out today. We should be to the market pretty soon. One fifty for a cocoa. That is very, very cheap. And then look at this little cart of jackfruit. You can see it's shredded, you can see little pieces of it. This is the cheapest coconut water we've seen so far, and it might be one of the better ones, actually. You can see there's a ton of water in there, it's cold, fresh. Natural orange juice. These street food carts are awesome here. They have so many different things. Some places you get like the same thing over and over, but here every cart is a new one. You have the jackfruit, coconut, water, orange juice, kaja fruit, and kebabs like meats on sticks. Look, it's the cashew fruit. Rarely see this in this form. So we think we might be in the artisanal market, but it seems more like a farmer's market with fruits and vegetables, so not really sure. Looks like we're stuck here. <laughs> Perfect jam. 
Lindsay doesn't like a lot of people or loud music or all together. So this isn't Lindsay's kind of place. And all this going on during COVID. Very interesting that there's still places like this during this time. And not even everyone's wearing masks, which is interesting. Right in this little space. I feel like you're driving, but you're walking. This guy keeps getting stuck in here. <laughs> Finally passed us. Wow. Stuck again. It's not the best place to drive through. <laughs> you would think a local would know that. <laughs> Let's go this way. Looks like a Chirimoya. I can wait. <laughs> these are some of the cheapest prices that we've seen yet for these fruits. Lindsay, what did you just see? I don't know what kind of fruit it was, but it, it's this green fruit and you can get 10 of them for a dollar. Chirimoya, I think. Is it? Yeah, Chirimoya, 10 little ones for a dollar. You can get a pineapple for 20 cents. This is crazy. <laughs> Stuck behind a bunch of baskets. So it looks like this is actually the artisanal market and what we're going through is another kind of market. Kind of like a farmer's market, kind of like a shopping experience. Huge, so many people. So now we got to the artisanal market and we'll go check it out. You go through the doors of that thing and it is a completely different world in here. Artisanal market. Much nicer of a space. So these are like handicrafts made by artisans. One bummer thing about traveling is we always see a lot of amazing goods like this that we would love to take home, but since we only travel out of a backpack or a suitcase, we can only buy a few things. entered a new part of the market and it looks like there are a bunch of spices, there's incense, a lot of smells coming up. Smells everywhere. Herbs, maybe herbs for teas? I don't know, but this market kind of segregates into different areas. Like in this cart, he's selling coconuts, a different kind of coconut that it looks like you shred. So you buy it, and then he shreds it right here on a little off device. I love coconuts, so I am gonna try this. It looks super good and fresh. Go, go. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. <laughs> So you can see him shredding it into this bowl and then he'll put it in a bag and give us the whole bag of the shreds. He said it's free real, so that's like 60 cents. Got it. All of that from one 
Obrigado. 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 Let's try this. It's not shreds. They're very soft. Softer than one you would buy in the store. Mm. A little sweet, a little soft with a little crunch. It's good. Little. Still got a shred. I always find it interesting all the remotes people sell. They have these bikes that carry around all these containers of coffee and deliver it to you. That's pretty cool. Mobile coffee shop. Amazing. Alright, we finally got out of that hectic market and now we are gonna find our car and drive to Meragoji, which we've heard awesome things about and we cannot wait to see it. We're hungry, so real quick we're stopping in a McDonald's in Brazil and we're going through the drive thru so this could be difficult ordering in it. English or no? Okay. Uh Ablas English. Oh I'm also. <laughs> I'm gonna take that as a no. Uh, do it for. Thank you for having me. McNuggets. 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 Corturel. Vem aqui pra cabine. Próxima cabine. No, no, say. Hello. <laughs> See the 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 promotion. Um, it's always yeah, fun uh, ordering in a different sauce. country. Barbecue? barbecue. Somehow it's for, easier to understand when you pull nuggets. up in the car and can actually uh, see the person. <laughs> uh, do, do it. One, two, three. See. <laughs> hey, at least we're having fun with it. <laughs> nice to meet you. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> we just told her we had a YouTube channel and gave her our card, so. Hello, whenever you watch this. The sad little cone here. McDonald's is a lot more reasonable here. We both ordered full meals, so burger, fries, uh, a soda, ice cream, yeah, nuggets. And I think it came out to like $10 for two of us, which in the US, if you get one meal, it's around eight to $10, so. And we ordered a lot. We didn't know we were gonna be filming this for you or else we would have tried the Brazilian McDonald's. There is like a picana burger mm -hmm. and a couple things that are more Brazilian. We like trying the menu of the country that we're in because it changes a little bit wherever you go. Maybe we'll go to McDonald's again I'm and we'll sure show you I'm sure we that. will on the road trip. This time we're just eating in the car so we just got something boring. <laughs> this isn't very healthy, but. What's funny is we almost never eat McDonald's back home but this was just a quick thing we could do here. Um, they don't have a lot of fast food. We've noticed Bob's and McDonald's. We just wanted something that we could get in the car so that we can get to where we're going faster. So we're eating our McDonald's and it seems pretty much the same, except we've noticed that they use melted uh, liquid cheese instead of uh, slices of cheese, at least on the burger that we got. And the meat seems a bit different. Don't really know how to describe it, but it has a different texture. Not in a bad way. Any words? Yum. Alex was so hungry. <laughs> it's one o'clock and I still haven't eaten any breakfast, so. That's way too long to wait for breakfast. Okay guys, 
guys, it's time for a little Q&A. First Q&A, it's from Caio Freitas, who says, did the doctor speak English? How do you rate your patient experience in Brazil overall? Love the free healthcare for all? Yes, that is an amazing thing that Brazil has, is free healthcare, not only for its citizens, but for tourists, that is, exceptional that's yeah. <laughs> very different i didn't know anywhere would do that for tourists we were so surprised by that we actually purchased travel insurance to come to brazil but in hindsight we wish we wouldn't have done that because public health care here is totally free and when we say totally free we mean a hundred percent you don't have to pay for a single thing and the patient experience was good of course they didn't speak any English mm -mm. at all, so I couldn't really talk to them or anything. Uh, the doctor spoke a little bit of English, but the doctor I only got to talk to at the very end of the whole like five, six hour experience. So, and he just said everything was okay. <laughs> really, he, did. he said it, he said your hand isn't broken. Uh, it's something else. Yeah, that's all. Honestly, it the healthcare here is a lot better than I ever could have imagined. And for those of you who don't know what we're referring to, Alex had some wrist pain. He had to go to the doctor. We'll try to link that video. We'll try to link that video right here. I think that pretty much covers it. It was a good experience. And the next question from Jack Yuzo. Are you guys not afraid of COVID-19? How do you avoid the virus? And if you feel the symptoms or get sick, do you know what to do? Yeah, that is a legitimate concern. Um, I mean, Alex has to travel for his job, so. We had no idea how long this whole COVID situation was gonna go on. And yeah, if it was only for a month or two, maybe we could stop, not travel, stay at home. But for a year, it's gonna, it's coming up on a year soon that it's been like this and who knows how much longer it's gonna go on. So I couldn't just sit at home and do nothing for a year mm -hmm. of life or more. So yeah. uh, we're taking our chances in a way. Uh, we try to stay healthy and yeah. hopefully we would be okay if we did come across it. A lot of people our age who get the virus usually are just fine. Uh, I guess if we had any severe symptoms, we would just go to the nearest hospital. As we just mentioned in our last question, healthcare here is free. So we feel like we would be in good hands here in Brazil. All right, the next question is from Clifford Fawcett, Fawcett, who says, do you guys find it easier to have a planned itinerary or just see where the day takes you and why? We kind of do a bit of both. There's pros and cons to each one. Usually I like to plan less. I've been traveling for a few years and I didn't really plan much past a day or two. I would usually only plan like one or two days ahead, so not too much. This has been different lately. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've had almost our whole trip kind of planned for us because we've had someone helping us. Thanks, Lucas. <laughs> and Lindsay is here to make some plans, uh, whereas I just kind of go wherever I go. So it's the, been hard yeah. on me, the change. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice, but also hard. The nice thing with not planning is if you end up really loving a place, you can just be flexible and hang out there, spend more time there. Because when you make an itinerary, you never know which places you're going to love and not care for as much until you actually arrive. Um, some of the places that have been super hyped up in Brazil, we were less excited about. Some that weren't as hyped up, we absolutely fell in love with. Because we have a strict itinerary, we had to stay on track, so... But with a planned itinerary, there's a bit less stress involved. You know what's coming, you know how to prepare and research. So sometimes you can get better deals on accommodation if you book ahead of time and with flights, so. So bittersweet. Yeah. Last question comes from Miguel Gonzalez. Says, why is food not included in your expense list? He is referring to the expense list we put at the end of our videos, and we want to clarify a bit on this, so. So at the end of every video, we try to do uh, an expense list, what we spent for that video. So sometimes our video is the whole day, but sometimes our video is only a part of our day. 
Uh, so we only include what's in the video, so that's why it might be a little confusing sometimes. So uh, Miguel said that, Miguel asked why we don't include food. He must have looked at one where we didn't eat during mm -hmm. the duration of that video, but we do include food. Uh, a lot of times we'll just say breakfast instead of saying every single item just because sometimes we don't remember every single piece We just remember the end result the receipt we got in the end um, It would be interesting to do the expense list for the entire day But at the same time it could be confusing because there will be things that aren't in the video from that day Because sometimes like Alex said we don't film our entire day start to finish. So this is the way we've chosen to do it Hopefully you guys have liked it. If you have any suggestions, you can leave a comment below and we'd love to hear. Anything else you want to say about expense list? <laughs> we understand it could have been a little bit confusing for you guys because some people thought we were doing our whole day and putting that on the video. So yeah. we, can, we can understand the confusion. It's confusing to us too. We're still figuring it out. It's a new thing that we're trying. Um, we're kind of traveling on a budget, so we thought it'd be interesting for you guys to know what things actually cost in certain countries. So you know what to expect if you ever go to that country. Yeah, so definitely we would love to hear your feedback. Uh, we know that we could do better with it. There are mm -hmm. some ideas we've been throwing around. We could do dollars and also real, so that Brazilians know how much in their own currency, but it, it also takes a long time to do that. We have to remember each item <laughs> from a few days before or whenever we post the video. Uh, we have to make sure that we add it up right, write it all in there every time. So it gets to be a lot of work if we add too much to it. So, so we're keeping it simple. Yeah. All right, that's the end of this Q&A and we will see you in the next video.